All right, welcome back. We're here with uh, core thermal limits. Excuse me. Okay, um, this is uh, 193009 is a topic. We're going to do three questions real quick. These are all over uh, hot channel factors and how to apply them to the uh, these... Uh, calculation problems. Okay, so we'll start with uh, P5249. And uh, reactor is operating at 3400 megawatts thermal power. Core linear power density limit is 12.2 kilowatts per foot. So LPD limit. All right. So given we've got 198 fuel assemblies, 262 fuel rods per assembly, and active length is 12 feet. Highest total peaking factors measured in the core are as follows. Uh, location A, B, C, and D, somewhere between 2.2 and 2.5. So which one of the following describes the operating conditions in the core relative to the linear power density limit of 12.2? All right, so uh, the answer is going to be D. That's fine. But let's figure it out. So remember I said hot channel factor is going to be equal to the max LPD divided by the average LPD. They've given us max LPD right here. Uh, they've given us average LPD right here. We just got to calculate it. So the maximum the limit for maximum LPD divided by the average linear power density is going to be the maximum hot channel factor that you can have. So any hot channel factor that will be greater, any of these numbers, A, B, C, or D, that will be greater than the hot channel factor max is going to exceed the limit, if that makes sense. So let's find that, right? So we got 12 kilowatts per foot. We're going to divide that by a number. And that number is going to be 3400 uh, times 10 to the 3 meg kilowatts. Uh, shoot. Well, let's see if I can clean that up a little. All right. Not a lot of room there. Kilowatts. And we got to get feet on the bottom, right? So we've got 198 fuel assemblies. Um, sorry about that. Um, 262. And that's rods. For fuel assembly and then you got 12 feet per rod all right sorry about that being all bunched up like that um, but I think we can go through it so fuel assemblies will cancel out rods will cancel out and we have kilowatts per foot so we know we're right so it's gonna be 3400 times 10 to the third and that's just 3400 megawatts turned into kilowatts I did that kind of quick and we're going to divide that by 198 times 262 times 12. Uh, so I'll just do that whole calculation right here, right? 12, kilo, 12 kilowatts divided by 3400 um, times 1000 divided by... 198 times 262 times 12. Right, and that should give me my maximum hot channel factor. And that is going to be 2.19. Um, hmm. Oh, I made a mistake. Sorry. One sec. It's not 12 kilowatts, it's 12.2. 2.234. 2 
So the hot channel factor max is going to be 2.234. So if a location is greater than 2.234, and I can see that A, B, and C are, and D is not, I want to know that everybody's exceeding limits. All three out of four of those are exceeding limits, the P LPD limit, linear power density limit. And uh, only location delta is not. So if we go to A, all locations in the core are operating below the LPD. Well, that's not true. Uh, B, location A has exceeded the linear power density limit, while locations B, C, and D are operating below the limit. That is not true. Locations A and B have exceeded the power limit, and C and D are operating below the limit, so that's wrong. So delta has got to be correct, but we'll read it anyway. Locations A, B, and C have exceeded the linear power density limit, while location D is operating below the limit. Location D is operating below the limit because its hot channel factor has not gone above 2.234, meaning its max LPD linear power density is not above 12.2 kilowatts per foot. We'll do another one like that in a minute. We'll do it a little bit differently uh, to show you some, um, I don't know, some difference. All right, next question. <clears throat> uh, reactor is operating steady state conditions in the power range of the following average coolant temperatures, following average temperatures in a core plane. All right. Assume the fuel rod heat transfer coefficients and reactor coolant temperatures are equal throughout the core plane. Okay. If the maximum total peaking factor in the plane is 2.1, let me erase that. Change my color. The max uh, total peaking factor is 2.1. What's the maximum fuel center line temperature in a core plane? Okay. Um, so again, we got the uh, hot channel factor. It's going to be 2.1, and that's going to be max over average. So not only the max over average uh, power density, but it's also proportional to uh, delta T between the coolant and the fuel, right? So we could say max delta T over average delta T. Now what have they given us? They've given us the average temperatures in a core plane. And so we're going to know this right here. And we're going to find this, but it wants to know maximum fuel center line temperature well the uh, coolant temperature is not going to change and that is because reactor coolant temperatures are equal throughout the core plane all right so what we do here is 2.1 times the average uh, delta T change in temperature which is going to be 1680 degrees minus 550 degrees and that's going to be equal to delta T max, which is going to be temperature center line max minus 550. All right. And that's going to be 2.1 times the quantity 1680 minus 550. Five, Two three seven three. So if we add five fifty to each side, temperature center line max equals two three seven three plus five five zero. And that's degrees Fahrenheit. So plus five five zero is going to be two nine two three. Temperature center line max. 2923, 2923 degrees Fahrenheit. 2923, it's A, it's not 3528, it's not 4000. <coughs> so that is that one. Uh, remember that uh, hot channel factor counts for linear power density flux and uh, delta T's, okay? That's how you figure that one out. All right, moving on. We'll come back to this type of problem. Uh, now it's a 3300 megawatt thermal power. Uh, the core linear power LPD limit is 12.4 kilowatts per foot. 
So we've got the max, or the limit, right, that we can have. Uh, so now we have to find the average, and we're going to find it right here. With uh, 198 fuel simply, 262 fuel rods, 12 feet long. Alright, so we say LPD average is going to be equal to 3300 megawatts. Uh, one megawatt equal to 1,000 kilowatts. Then we got to go to feet. And I wonder, maybe I have, I have a lot of room down there. Crud. Um, how about this? This will be better. Average LPD: 3,300 megawatts. 1 megawatt, 1,000 kilowatts. Bam, bam. Megawatts go away. So we have 198 fuel assemblies, 198 FAs, fuel assemblies, 262 fuel rods per each fuel assembly. So one fuel assembly is 262 rods. And uh, they're all 12 feet long, active length. One rod equals 12 feet long. So now we change your color if you want. Now we've got kilowatts. Oh, maybe we didn't. There we go. Kilowatts, fuel assemblies, rods, cross out. And uh, average LPD is going to calculate to 198 times 262 times 5.301 kilowatts per foot. So we have a max of 12.4, right? So we're looking for a hot channel factor of uh, or we could do it if we want to do it differently I guess we could it'll be all right so we could look for our max LPD if we plug in 2.5 because we know that hot channel now hot channel factor is equal to max LPD over average LPD. So if we say uh, at A, we got 2.5 times 5.301 kilowatts per foot uh, times 2.5, we're going to get 13.25, 13.25 uh, kilowatts per foot. And that's going to be higher than 12.4. All right, so we know that A has exceeded. And then we go back with our calculator um, and just repeat. So for location B, we're going to be 2.4 is our hot channel factor times uh, 5.301 kilowatts per foot. That's going to be equal to 12.72. So that one's exceeded. And for Charlie, we're going to be 2.3 times 5.301 kilowatts per foot. Um, let's see if I can do that. 5.301 times 2.3, that's 12.19, 12.19 kilowatts per foot. And then for delta, our hot channel factor is going to be 2.2. So we don't, I guess we can do this if you want, uh, but if 2.3 is not above the limit of 12.4, then 2.2 isn't going to be, but just for fun, 
equals 2.2 times 5.301, 11.66 kilowatts per foot. So now we know that A is exceeded, B is exceeded, Charlie is good, and Delta is good. All locations in core are operating below the linear power density limit, so that's not true. Location A has exceeded the linear power density limit, while locations B, C, and D are operating below the limit. That's not true. Locations A and B have exceeded the power limit. Yeah, while locations C and D are operating below the limit. That's true, but we're going to read delta anyway. Locations A, B, and C have exceeded the limit. All right, they're just relying on you to mess up your calculations if you do that. I think it's much easier just to get the hot channel factor and realize that it's different in each location, but there is a different way to do this problem. Listen, I hope this has helped. Leave some feedback in the comments if you want to, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Have a good day.